Hello everyone. Welcome back. Good morning. I hope you're having a blessed day as we are here in the Pacific Northwest where the sun is shining but it's not too hot. <laughs> so this morning we're going to be studying the topic number two, a need to expand the understand. Before we go into it, let's remember what we talked about yesterday. We were we are studying chapter 15 of Acts and we got to know a little bit about the church in Antioch where both Gentiles and Jew worshiped together and they were united until a different idea was brought into the church. It was brought in by the Pharisees um, from Judea who were converted to Christianism but they wanted everyone to be circumcised and they thought that that was um, a point of salvation. And in bringing this to the church in Antioch where there were both Gentiles and Jews, that created some division. And so now the question for today, it says, to ensure that harmony was brought back into the church with regard to circumcision and the ceremonial law that had pointed to Christ's first advent as the Lamb of God, what was needed? Our verse is 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, which is also our memory verse. And it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So we have here the council that they needed to preserve unity. And what did they do about it to restore that um, harmony that they had once? Let's look in verse 2 of chapter 15, where it says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of the uh, certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about the question. So here we see that they decided to seek counsel from the apostles in Jerusalem. Not just send Paul and Barnabas, but they also sent a um, representation of the church to Jerusalem to discuss and pray together um, until they came to an agreement that the church would accept. Now, question B says, what news were the disciples from Antioch able to bring? And in verse 3 and 4 of chapter 15, we read, And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. So what a wonderful example here of um, really um, a determination to continue to share the gospel with others. Instead of just traveling straight over to Jerusalem to discuss the matter and take care of business, they were... Um, they passed through other churches and there too were able to share the gospel and to bring gladness to all the people by sharing their experiences in Antioch. And um, the same as they were stopping and, and continuing their travels, every place that they went, the news of conversion was um, a joy to everyone. So question C says, even after hearing the update of fulfilled prophecies in Gentile conversions, what did some of the believing Pharisees still insist and why? So even though the apostles brought joyful news of fulfillment of prophecy, Jesus had said that the, they would have to go out into Samaria and there they would preach the gospel and they would be received. Even after bringing those news, the Pharisees converts still insisted on um, 
on something and why. Why did they insist on that? So let's look at verse 5 of chapter 15. It says, But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So even then, um, this Christian converts from the Pharisee sect still insisted that they needed to have circumcision. Why was that necessary in their mind? Well, there, there were several reasons. One of the reasons was that they the law was given to Moses and they thought that there was no need for it to be changed. They didn't they were slow to understand that when Jesus came, those things, those laws and sacrifices and rituals that they had kept before and that pointed to Jesus were no, no longer necessary. So um, they were slow to understand that. They also had a little bit of pride. Um, in their customs and the distinction that it gave them from the other nations and the other reason is that they thought that because the church would both Jews and Gentiles the Gentiles were more eager and more quickly to accept the gospel and they were growing in numbers and so little by little that tradition of circumcision was going to be lost and that was the reason why they wanted to keep that not because it was necessary but because they were slow to understand what it pointed to and how it was no longer necessary and because they had a little bit of jealousy and pride in them in that they were fulfilling the moses law so lesson for us we need to be careful and we need to seek counsel with our brothers in prayer and in prayer so that we will have the right understanding of the Word of God and we will be able to distinguish the things that are necessary for us to do for our salvation and the things that pointed to Christ's coming but are no longer necessary. And always keep in mind that the Lord wants us to be united. And um, seeking counsel in prayer is the best decision that we can do. So may the Lord help us and bless us and continue to be with us during this day. And I will see you tomorrow for our next topic of this lesson.